took a few courses on doing real estate photography. I bought a um, about a $4,000 camera setup between the camera and the lens, a really nice Nikon. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caroo! He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. So if I need to move fast, I can move as fast as they want. My mornings are uh, sacred. My mornings are my prospecting time. I don't set appointments for the mornings. I don't know, I mean, you just create a client for life. And when they answer the phone that way, it's a done deal. But like stay busy, stir the pot, talk to people. And I'm telling you that this is easy. You're making it hard. The more days on market, the more stigmatized property gets and the, potentially the lower the offers are gonna be that are coming in once somebody likes it. When I do have a good call, I repeat my name. What up? Yo, what's happening, man? So tell me about these listings. Dude, uh, so January 1, I hosted a big thing in my Zoom room where we kicked the year off right with all of the new expired listings that hit. January 1st is the biggest batch of expired listings you're going to get on the first of any month of the year. And um, I ended up uh, having, I don't know, 25 or 30 agents that came in. We all made calls together. And on one of the calls I made, uh, I picked up three appointments. And so far, one of those has turned into a listing, which I put on the market uh, two days ago. So it's uh, January 8th. You made these calls on January 1. On January 1. I talked put to those the, people for the first time that day. First time that day. Just reached out. Um, and and none of them had had any calls from any other agent. Matter of fact, I asked that question. Because I wanted to see how many agents were calling on the 1st of January or yeah. were we still stuck in this holiday feeling where it's like, all right, well, the 1st is a holiday, so I'm yeah. not going to start real estate until yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And so I got to jump on everybody in my market, which was flipping hilarious. I love, yeah. I love doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing, right? When they're going hard, I'm working on other stuff. When they relax, I'm crushing it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I ended up going live with that one. It was three three thirty five nine, so it was a little over the midpoint in my market, and went live on January fifth on that expired. So you called them on the first and had it listed by the fifth on the market. Yeah. So, which means you signed the listing like on the second, on the fourth. How'd you do? How'd you get pictures and do all that so fast to get it on the? Market well, I do all of my own um, photography. So I went out last year. I got fed up with the quality of pictures I was getting from the professional photographers in my area. And so I bought a um, about a $4,000 camera setup between the camera and the lens, a really nice Nikon, and took a few courses on doing real estate photography. And now I have complete control over when that occurs. I also went out and got my drone pilot's license. And so I do all my own drone photography as well. It adds another thing to my plate that I have to do, but what it eliminates is I don't have to wait for somebody else's schedule to be able to accommodate what I need to accommodate. So if I need to move fast, I can move as fast as they want. Of course, if I need to move slow, I can do that as well if they're not ready or you know they need time for this, that, and the other. So, so. like you're, so like, wait a minute. So, so you, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. <laughs> So you're telling me like you, you know, you prospect, you go get listings, you go to listing appointments, you coach agents, right? Mm -hmm. And you take your own pictures and you don't have an assistant, right? No, nah, no assistant. You don't yet. have an assistant. So like you're literally. <laughs> okay. You've been after me for a while, man. You're like, you could get so much more done if you got an assistant. And yeah, I, I probably could. I am I'm not even going there with it. I'm just mind right. blown by how much you do. <laughs> yeah 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 i do i do all of it it's um how do you do well, all that i mean like you coach agents right you have a real estate business where you close five plus deals a month right yeah. how many you close yeah, a month? Consistent. about five plus about five yeah yeah Between five deals a month mm -hmm. um and you just stay consistent with all of it and you take your own pictures. Yeah. 
Well, here's the thing. It comes down to time blocking, right? So um, my mornings are uh, sacred. My mornings are my prospecting time. I don't set appointments for the mornings. I don't gossip with family members in the mornings. I don't anything. That is my time to grow my business and keep my pipeline full. Uh, my afternoons are my appointments. Um, as far as the photography piece of it, uh, anytime I had a listing before I did my own photography, I would always meet the photographer there anyway, help with the staging of each room, make sure everything was just like I wanted it so that the photos I got were what I wanted. Um, and so I was spending the same amount of time there. I was just also spending money for the photographer to, you know, take the pictures and then take them back and do the post, the post editing and stuff on. It. That was the hardest part for me, you know, because I'd already been staging rooms for quite a while. I already knew about camera setup, lighting, that kind of thing, um, you know, time of day and all of the stuff that goes into getting really great uh, photos. And so for me, it was just really learning Photoshop and Lightroom Classic more than anything else as far as in the post-production stuff. And I'm getting faster and faster with that. So in the beginning, it would take me three or four hours to edit a batch of photos, which was more time consuming than the photos themselves or the prospecting session to create the listing. Now I'm down to the point where it's about 30 or 45 minutes for me to edit um, a full batch of photos. I'm already spending the same amount of time that I would have been spending anyway uh, on the photo shoot because I would have been there and, you know, then just protecting my prospecting sessions. Do you aspire to go to 10 transactions a month? 15, I do. 20? And things are going to have to change because I'm about at I'm about at the limit of what I can accomplish between the coaching, the photography, the prospecting, the going on the appointments and all that stuff. Now, my wife is also a real estate agent. And so I've kind of handed off all of my buyers to her so that she can go do the chasing people around and all that. Um, but that doesn't really keep her busy, busy all the time. And so we have been talking, her and I, about her taking some of the the load off my shoulders as far as like the transactions, you know, maybe her picking up the transaction coordination piece. Yeah. That I can spend more time doing the uh, the prospecting end of it. But then who's going to take the buyers? She's going to do the buyers as well, because that's because that's not filling her days up. Mm -hmm. um, now, once that starts filling her days up, then together we're going to probably have to pick up a um, an assistant. Uh, but at that point, when we're both at kind of our limit, well, then that assistant should have plenty to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we so can you got grow. plenty to do now. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah. But now the other one was a, um, the other one that I just listed yesterday on the 7th was a FISBO. And I reached out to him uh, the first week of December. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a, um, he's a retired gentleman who likes to pick up properties, renovate them kind of at his own pace and then, and then sell them. So he's not like okay. a professional fix and flipper. He's yeah. kind of a hobbyist fix and flipper, but he's picking right. up nice properties. This one was 350,000. And um, so I went out and met with him in December. Uh, we had a, a, a great meeting. He wasn't interested in working with an agent at that point, but we really connected on a bunch of different levels and um, he has two other properties that he's just about done on the renovation work on, and he was going to go FISBO with them. So I went out yesterday, met with them, got all my photos, got the thing uploaded into the MLS last night. He called me this morning and said, hey, I love what you did on, on the photos, the description and all that stuff. Let's get together this week and go look at the other two and get a game plan for getting both of them listed. Mm. So... Really going deep on the relationship on these things and not worrying about transactions, which is like exactly what you teach. And um, by doing that, like you really get a lot of goodwill and a lot of, um, I don't know. I mean, you just create a client for life. So when you go talk to a for sale by owner, did, did he indicate before you came that like he wasn't going to work with agents, et cetera? Yeah, well, he specifically said uh, when I called him, he said, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not uh, working with agents. I, in the past three years, I've sold a couple of houses for sale by owner, and I'm pretty comfortable doing that myself." Mm -hmm. 
And I said, well, heck, that's great. Matter of fact, you'll save a lot of money doing it that way. I'd still like to come out and meet you, right, and see the place. And, uh, you know, maybe I can add something to what you're doing and help you sell it on your own. Mm -hmm. And he goes, sure. So I went out and met with him. Um, it's funny because I put his call video, his call video on my YouTube channel. And in the beginning of the call with him, he was very standoffish, one word answers, like he really wasn't giving me anything. I'm going to before call, I forget about it. I'm going to put the link. Oh, Send me the link for that video. Okay. Um, Not now necessarily, but just yeah, afterwards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, um, I'm going to link, put it in the description so people can actually go there and watch the yeah. actual call that you had. This is the first call that you had with him. First call. Yeah. You guys can go watch the very first call Shane had with this guy. He had the call on first week of December. He just listed the guy this week. So it took 30 days. It yep. was a guy who wasn't going to work with agents already sold for sale by owner was successful, saved the commission money. Literally one of those leads that most agents would be like, I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm not even going to go talk to them. I'm not even going to, you know, I'm just going to scratch them off my list. Mm -hmm. You actually pursued him and said, well, let me come talk to you anyway. Let me come meet you. Let me come see if I can add some value. Yeah. And uh, here we are 30 days later. You've got one listed and two more on the way. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to, before I forgot about it, to... Uh, let everybody know I'm going to put that link below so they can watch mm -hmm. the actual call that you're talking about. But, but yeah, so he's given these one word answers, basically like not interested in working with agents whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, you know, how do you turn that into three listings a month later? Well, you have to really listen. Like on the initial call where I feel like I turned him around and opened him up to me a little bit. Um, he kept, he kept saying, sir, no, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever. And we live in a, um, we live near a military base here. And so I asked him, I said, are you former military? And he goes, yes, sir, I am. I was uh, uh, Navy. He said, I was former Navy. He said, you? And I said, no, nah, I was former law enforcement. But when you, when you, when you say sir like that, and I think he might've even used a, um, a phonetic, like a whiskey, Oscar, Romeo, whatever. Maybe when he was giving me his email address, he might've used a phonetic uh, that caused that question to come up. But by me tapping into listening to that thing that caused me to tap into his, his past, his history, and then to create some sort of a connection with him. Now I wasn't military. I should have been, you know, I was going to join the Navy. I didn't, I met a girl and that's the beginning of like every bad story that you can say. But, um, I was uh, law enforcement for 10 years. And so we used the same military phonetics that they used. And uh, so I was able to make that little connection with them, which then led to an appointment. And on the appointment, we we had a great connection. I mean, we ended up doing something that I never do with a client, which is we ended up talking politics and talking about children and 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 raising kids today and school systems. And I mean, we ended up going down a a, a deep path uh, just on a personal level, just two guys chatting, right? And um, at the end of that meeting, I felt really good that if things didn't go well for him, that uh, that I would end up getting the listing. I felt like I made that good a connection. And then I follow up with my Fizbos every Monday. And the Monday follow-up calls are the easiest thing in the world. You just, you know, reach yeah. out. Hey, how was your weekend? I had a great weekend. Did you have much traction? get them to talking about something. If they talk about something this week, like say they're going to their daughter's soccer game or whatever, next week, next Monday when I call, hey, how was the soccer game last week? Did your daughter win? You know, just something to go deeper in the relationship with them. And it's 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 literally an every Monday check-in with every one of the FISBOs I'm working. And by about the second or third week, what'll happen, and this is your clue that you've really, really got them. Instead of answering the phone, now I'm ringing them. Instead of them answering the phone, hello, they'll answer the phone, hey, Shane, how was your weekend? And when they answer the phone that way, it's a done deal, right? Unless they sell it on their own, it's my listing. And then at that point, I'm not competing against other agents, right? I'm not going in with a big flashy sales presentation and all that. I haven't done a legitimate CMA in over a year. I never did one. Yeah. Not one yeah. single time. 
Yeah, I did. I used to. I used to go in with glossy. I would print them and go in and try and really wow people. I, like I literally walk in with a couple of active comps and then yeah. and, and and a few documents like a like a marketing toolkit for Fizbo's and an open house sign in sheet, just some stuff so that I can have reciprocity, you know, play a part in our relationship. Yeah, th this is one of those things. It's like, you know, just go do stuff. That's it. Uh, you know, like stay busy, stir the pot, talk to people, see what you need right. to help them, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it it it's so simple. And people li might be listening to this saying, oh, yeah, you make it sound so simple. You, you know, you guys are selling all this property. It's not as easy as you make it up. We, we were where you are right now. And Absolutely. we have coached thousands of agents Absolutely. i've watched thousands of agents go through this whole struggle and i'm telling you that this is easy you're making it hard so going back to that first meeting when you sat down with them and you're talking about all this that and the other i got two questions one two. how long was that meeting and and two you know we're talking about life stuff and raising kids and everything else mm -hmm. But what converting questions did you ask? You know, did you talk about if you were to list it, do you have an agent or what's the chances you might list it or how long are you going to let this go before you decide you might want to hire an agent, you know? So how long was the meeting and mm -hmm. was there a point in the conversation where you took it towards the setup to list the property? Yeah, so I bring with me a for sale owner backup plan. Uh, it's basically the way that I plan on marketing the property if if they end up handing it off. It's their I'm giving up on it, throwing my hands up uh, plan for them, right? And so the end of all of my calls, I ask them if uh, if the property doesn't sell in the next 30 days, 45 days, whatever, are they going to look at other options to maybe get it sold? And so I've got that in my notes. And so when I go for my meetings, we're sitting down, we're talking, I'm going over all of the items that I brought with me to help them sell it on their own, like the active comp so they can justify the price that they got for it, the open house sign-in sheet, the marketing toolkit. Uh, I bring my vendor list with me. The vendors that I use on every one of my closings that I can vouch for 100% because I mean, they 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 get me from the uh, contract to close every time. And I say, look, guys, when you get this and I use assumptive language as if they're just going to sell it on their own. When you get this under contract, if you need vendors, use this list. I got my closing attorney on there. I've got my title company on there. I've got my my contractors on there, my loan officer on there. Anything you need. These people right here are professionals and they'll get the job done right. Um, and I know that because I've been in it long enough and I've used them long enough to know what kind of product they they provide or what kind of service they provide. Um, but use these people. And then uh, typically at that point, if they haven't opened the door right now, we've already gone through my price recommendation. I've, I've reviewed their Zillow listing and kind of gone over where, where they can maybe make it better and all this. I also go over the... Uh, the difficulty that they have just inherently built into how buyers find their property online, right? Because it used to be on Zillow when you opened it up, uh, you had right on the main page, if you did a search for a certain city, right on the main page, you would have agent listings and then by owners or other. And it was two tabs. If you didn't see what you liked under agent listings, which was the preset, then you click on the other one. Well, last year, Zillow changed that. Now that those two tabs are in the menu, they're they're under the more menu, and so the buyers that are looking online, that like if they don't know that if they don't know to go up to more on Zillow and then go to the drop down menu and then choose other, they never even see it. So a lot of these Fizbos just aren't getting the exposure, they aren't getting the eyeballs on their property, and we talk about that. We also talk about days on market and how. Having a property on for you know six months, eight months, a year, even if it's on for sale by owner on Zillow, it's still hurting them in the long run because uh, the more days on market, the more stigmatized the property gets, and the, potentially the lower the offers are going to be that are coming in once somebody likes it. 
Um, when we get down to that point, if they haven't opened the door already with a question, like, well, what would it look like if you listed it? Tell me about your commission structure, whatever. If they don't open the door with a question that leads me into a uh, listing conversation, then I'll bring up what they said on the phone call. I'll say, hey, well, you mentioned that you were going to wait maybe 30 or 45 days and then start interviewing agents. Is it okay if I put in my application now? That way, when the day comes or if the day comes and you throw your hands up, you already kind of have me in your back pocket. And they'll laugh and they're like, yeah, sure. So then I go into what I would do listing their property at that point. Wow. So the magic line is, I'd like to go ahead and put my application in. Now, absolutely. The magic <laughs> line is, I would like to go ahead and put my application in now. Where do I submit it? That's what right. I tell you. Where, where do I put my application in? Because I like, like this is my job here. This is what I want to do. That's good. And I, and I love when FISBOs ask me, this is something else when we're on the phone call, because this is something I don't believe any other agents are doing. When they make a statement, something to the tune of, well, all you want is the listing, right? You hear that every once in a while when you get them on the phone and it's like, yeah. no, actually I'm looking to help you however I can, but are you looking for a listing agent? Because <laughs> I can apply for that job. Don't don't throw something out there because I'll spin it and put it right back. Right. On you. right. you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, yeah, well, that's not that's what, what I'm you're looking, looking for. Exactly. That's not actually quite the opposite. But is that what you're looking for? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh, that and that will make them laugh. And they're like, oh, crap. I kind of opened the door to this conversation <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. A lot of fun. Uh, it's it's and then like. You didn't magically know these lines or nuances or having fun. What's up? Having fun on the phone calls. That's all it is. I Don't mean, when so you started out, like, you, you know, you, you know, w were you that good, that smooth? No, no, yeah. not, no, no. Did you I suck? don't think I was anywhere near that smooth. Um, I had, I mean, I sucked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was really bad. I mean, I don't know. I was probably better than I think I was, um, right. better than average, I'm sure. But in my mind, I was horrible on the right. phone. I guess I'm comparing myself now, you know, to then we're always getting better, but, um, I came know. on your channel back in December of 2020 and I made my first one hour call session with you. My first time ever live on YouTube with, with anything. And I went back and listened to that a couple months ago. And listening to it now, I was like, oh, my God, I was bad. Yeah. You yeah, know, I had pretty yeah. good success. I still connected with people, but it wasn't it wasn't great. I wish I had a video camera from back when I was doing it back in 2002, 2003. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Ugh. And then uh, 2008 when I got back in uh, making mm -hmm. calls and stuff. Um, and I'm sure those were interesting, but, but yeah, I mean, people hear us talk about, you know, how smooth these conversations go and how it's just putting our hands and it just kind of falls in our lap kind of deal. But what they don't get is that this is, this comes from years and years and thousands and thousands of conversations where each little conversation, you get a little better, you know, than the last one, mm -hmm. right? And not as good as the next one. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of keep going down that path. Every call, you're a little better. You don't realize it, but you're yeah. literally molding yourself into this great communicator just from sheer experience and figuring out what the tone and nuance and speed and everything should be mm -hmm. that best makes people feel comfortable with you. But then you kind of realize there's no boogeyman. No. Nah. You know, every situation is just, you know, basically the prospect blowing smoke. Right. You know, it's like, right. hey, you know, you're just trying to get the listing. You know, right then, that's just, that's a common smoke blowing uh, yeah. maneuver, you know. And you just yeah. laugh. It's like when people are mean to me on the phone, you know, which is rare, honestly. But when they are, I just literally, I laugh out loud. Yeah. And because uh, it's funny. Because I know is. that they're just blowing smoke. They're not actually mean. Nobody right. can actually be that mean to where, you know, they want you to 
know, whatever. So I've got a Jedi mind trick that I do with the mean ones, right? I call them my militant Fizbos. The mm -hmm. one call them up and you say, Hey, uh, my name's Shane. I'm a local realtor. Call, uh, I'm calling about your for sale by owner property on Johnson Street. Is that is that for sale by owner? And they'll go, I don't need a realtor. Don't call me. And they hang up, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull their name and I'll lock their number in and I'll set them for a two week callback. And I do a Jedi mind trick on them. When I call them back in two weeks, right? Ring, ring, ring. They answer the phone. I'll say, hey, John. Yeah. Hey, this is Shane. I'm that realtor you spoke to a couple of weeks ago. Really enjoyed our conversation, man. Super fun to get to know you a little bit. Just wanted to find out how things have been in the last two weeks. They won't remember the call where they hung up on you. They'll think that you had a great connection. And the second call, about nine times out of 10, the second call is a great call. Oh my God. Right. Jedi mind trick, oh man. My that's God. my, that's my, that's my thing. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Because you know that, that I say, I, I used to say this all the time. I say this in a long time. When you call someone and it was a bad call or whatever, they don't, they don't remember your name. Mm -mm. Lit literally when you say your name and then they say what they, they didn't hear your name. They don't, they mm -hmm. definitely did not remember it. Even if they could quite possibly remember it. They're not even sure that they remembered it correctly. Right. Um, like when you get off the phone, they literally, you could literally call them back the next day and start all over again for like round two. Let's see how this goes. See which side <laughs> of the bed they woke up on today yeah, because that's right. It's literally like Groundhog Day, man. It's like we're calling goldfish here. They they literally do not remember. <laughs> oh, they literally it. do not remember uh -uh. anything. And nah. uh, that's why at the end of the call, when I do have a good call, I repeat my name. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'm like, well, again, my name is and da da da. Mm -hmm. And I worked with this company and I, blah, 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 blah. Right, and right, I, right. You know, I reiterate everything that, that I wanted them to remember, you know, especially my name and everything, um, because I know they don't remember my name at all. Right. Um, you know, by the time you get that far in the conversation, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people get off the phone with agents and think, who the heck was that? That was sure was a nice guy or a nice girl. And I don't, <laughs> who the heck was that? You know, that's right. And they remember right. the name and then they start getting the email or whatever. And they, some, they're like, oh, I've heard that name before somewhere, but they can't quite mm -hmm. put two and two together. That's why it's good to repeat the name. Yeah. Your name, um, your company, all that good stuff at the end of the call. Okay. You know, okay, cool. We'll see you soon. And again, just, just to reiterate here, you know, here's my name, here's my company, you know, looking That's forward right. to getting to know you more. Um, but yeah, you could literally have a do over. You can the next day on yeah. these people if you wanted to i never really cared to because i could just call a fresh list and talk to some more people right uh m my mindset was like new 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 mm -hmm. you know if somebody was mean or didn't answer i just and and I, and that's another reason why i was never fond of for sale by owners because mm -hmm. i have to continue to call continue to, you know you do the calls every monday yep it's not in my dna yeah. To, to, to follow up like that. Um, you know, it, you know, I, I, I it's not my thing. <laughs> I like to call, have a great conversation, do a weekly email, let them call me when they get ready to do something. Let me continue right. on looking for people that are ready to do business with me now. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but that's the way you have to do for sale by owners. You've got to call them once a week, check on them, see how they're doing and continue you that do. relationship until the point they either Decide to throw in the towel and list it, mm -hmm. or they sell it herself or whatever. That's the only way to win. And I actually touch them twice well. a week. So I so I call them every Monday, and then they get my weekly market update every Wednesday. And the funny thing is, while they're for sale by owner, uh, for the most part, they all open my weekly email every single week. <laughs> Right. Like, like it's instant yeah. openers. <laughs> right, 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 right. Oh, uh, that's funny. That's yeah. so funny. Cool, man. Well, again, I'm going to, I'm going to post a link to that, uh, that call you did yeah. with that guy, the description. So you guys can go there, watch that call. You can kind of see how the whole thing started. This is literally the very first moment that he ever talked to this guy ever in his life, caught on film, boom, watch it. Uh, now, you know, the story on the back end, he listed 30 days later. So that's pretty cool to know how it all played out. I'll put that um, in the description. You guys can go subscribe to Shane's channel. He's always making live calls, giving good tips. 
all that good stuff. So anyway, man, um, cool. Well, awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to our next little uh, podcast, and I can't wait yeah, to man. hear about some more uh, listing stories, man. We need to call <laughs> this it. something like Listing Stories with Shane or something. That's it. That's right. <laughs> cool, bro. Talk to you soon, See you, brother. brother. All right, bud.